All right, let's get into the actual workflow actions that I've gone ahead and created for you guys. Now, these are in beta, and I want to stress this that this is not the final layout that I've gone ahead and um, put together. The final layout is going to be a little bit more concise and a little bit more uh, easy to follow. But it's, it, with, with its current state right now, it's not too bad. So I'm going to head and open up Lightroom. And I'm going to go ahead and pre-process the images real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Command A to select all the layers. Make sure Auto Sync is turned on just by flicking this little toggle right here. And I'm going to go negative 45 in the highlights, plus 45 in the shadows. Um, white balance, I'm going to switch that to Auto just to give it a little bit of warmth. And I'm going to bring the sharpening down to zero because I want to do my sharpening in Photoshop. And I've gone ahead and removed the chromatic aberration and enabled profile corrections. And that's pretty much it for that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the exposure on all these. That looks pretty good. This one's a little bit too hot. Let's bring that down to about 20. Bring this one down to about 20 as well. This one looks a little bit underexposed. Let's bring that up. This one looks okay. And this one's a little bit too bright. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Select all of them again by hitting Command A, and we're going to go edit in open as layers in Photoshop. So while this is doing its thing, I'm going to probably be selling this action set for about anywhere between eighty to one hundred and twenty dollars. That is because these are a I'm basically selling a workflow that works. So with the workflow. It's going to save you a ton of time because I've gone ahead and meticulous, meticulously, <laughs> there we go, um, develop these actions to work with my specific workflow. So with that being said, it's not going to be cheap. And it's cheap is kind of a relative term, but it's not going to be that cheap. It's not going to be like seamless cheap, which is like $7. It's not going to be like that which I completely regret doing, but you know, it's in the past, but whatever, but it's not going to be cheap. And let's, let's actually go ahead and edit this image with the action. So with the actions I have right here, we have a couple, not more than a little more than a couple. We have a ton of them, but I'm going to go ahead and run through all the actions and show you what they do. So we're going to start with the workflow actions and then we're going to go ahead and get into the additional actions. So let's go ahead and start by reversing the layers by clicking on the reverse layers and hitting the play button. And I am in the wrong playback option. So let's go ahead and switch that to accelerate. If you guys don't know that you can change the playback options, you can do that right here by hitting accelerated step by step or pause for however many seconds. Super easy for going back and checking to see if your actions are in the correct order. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're gonna go ahead and get number two, edit auto align layers, hit play. And that's going to auto align all the layers based on the topmost visible layer, which is our ambient, which is what I always like to um, auto align based off of. So it's just a smidge off. Next, we're gonna go ahead and turn off all these layers. So we have our side to side layers visible and we're going to go ahead and hit gradient blend right black and white. Now the black and white basically means what your layer mask will be um, visible as. So the layer mask will be black to white, black to white, black to white. So um, same thing with the gradient blend left, white to black, white to black. Okay. So we need black on this side. So we're going to go ahead and click on the right side because it applies it on the right side, which is our empty side. Let's go ahead and press play. It's going to apply a simple gradient, as you can see by holding down option and clicking on the gradient. It's just gone ahead and applied a pretty smooth gradient. And um, it's also, if you didn't know, it has basically duplicated the layer, turned off the original layer. So if you ever need to delete the... Um, adjustment layer that has been made, you can just go ahead and hover over, not hover over it, you can click on the layer 
and just hit delete. And now you have your original layer completely intact in case you hit the wrong one. Pretty simple and smooth thing in there. So let's go ahead and do that, uh, blend that with a gradient. And we're gonna go ahead and blend this. Oh, by the way, when you do these, um, these blending actions, it will automatically uh, select the brush tool for you and it'll, auto it'll automatically be in white. So just gonna let you know that right now. So that's pretty, pretty useful stuff right there. And I'm gonna blend that over here just by hitting X on the keyboard that switches the color swatches to black. And I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna change this. By the way, control plus option plus left click and dragging will allow you to adjust the size. <laughs> I was trying to think like, do I call it diameter? Cause that's what it's technically called, but it's the size. And I'm gonna paint black right here because I am in the reflection and I don't wanna be in the reflection. So that's looking pretty good. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and select our base layer, which is on the bottom. And we're gonna use that with the dual base flash, which is normal plus darkened. Now this is basically, I, I've talked about this in um, the previous videos, but this is just a simple action that just gets it. So you have, basically you're duplicating the layer, your base flash layer, and one of them's in normal and one of them's in darken. And it'll give you the masks and everything, they're all black, it'll give you the brush tool, and it starts with the darken because I like to start with that one first and we're gonna we're just gonna paint away some of that glare anything like that I don't need that over there um, do I need the normal layer probably not we're just gonna paint a little bit in the shadow area just so we can get a little bit more color in there for the um, the ambient layer that looks good I'm gonna put some over there I'm gonna put some over there okay cool Next, we have our lighten layers. So let's go ahead and go back to the actions. And we have two options here. Um, if you ever have, uh, what is it? Where you need to use darken for any reason at all, whether it be using, whether it be for like reflections or anything like that, or uh, window pools, you can go ahead and just hit the darken mode and it'll apply that darken mode with a hide all layer mask and a brush set to white so pretty snazzy stuff right there but that's not what we need we need light and blend mode click play on that and we're just going to resize the brush and paint in that area same thing with this one since we needed to be in lighten we can go ahead and press play and resize the brush and paint white so that's looking pretty good so far now this is where the interesting part comes in we are going to blend the ambient exposure, but we're not going to do it manually. We're going to do it automatically. So we have two options here. We have auto blend ambient normal, which is just basically taking the colors that we have now and just blending them like this. Or we have auto blend ambient exposure luminosity, which is just taking our brightness and leaving out all the color. So it's using the color from this, um, the flash it's using the color from the flash and not the color from the ambient so let's go ahead and do that I'm gonna show you actually normal first so this is normal and as you can see we got a lot of color cast going on but it doesn't look too bad uh, it looks pretty natural to me um, it's blended it very organically as you can see it's very much um, it's very much on the ambient side of things so so basically uh, what I mean is it blends in a ton of ambient, but you can always go in and brush away the ambient just like so. So pretty simple stuff. Let's go ahead and do luminosity since we don't want any of this color. It's a little bit too, ugh. it's too, ugh. you know what I mean? Let's go ahead and press play on that one. Blends it the exact same way. And we're going to go ahead and look at the layer. I think it's blending a little bit too much up in here. Let's go ahead and do that. 
and I don't think I like it over here. I like the shadows from the flash more on that. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and put some more flash in there. And I think that looks pretty good so far. Now, we can go ahead and do lab sharpening. If you're unaware of what lab sharpening is, lab or LAB is basically it is image mode LAB color, which basically it is brightness and then it is magenta green tint as A, I think, and then yellow blue tint as B. I could be completely wrong on that, but that's what I remember it being the last time I used it. But anyway, lab sharpening, we're going to go ahead and hit play on the lab sharpening. And it's going to pop up with a dialog box saying, um, or not saying anything, but it's just going to say like, hey, unsharp mask, how much do you want in the, uh, the amount? Or do you want to change the radius? Do you want to change the threshold? I always put it at 100 just because it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good thing to go off of. Let's go ahead and do this right here. Actually, let's go right here. So zero sharpening, it's a little bit fuzzy. We go ahead and go to like somewhere like 200, gives it really crisp and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and say like 100, it's fine. And we're going to go ahead and press OK, and it'll automatically switch back into RGB color. So you're working with red, green, and blue. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. If we look at it, it's plenty sharp. Let's see the before and after. Actually, I don't know why it's like that. It's just weird. I find that it does that quite a bit. But anyway, lab sharpening, and if you ever want to flatten the image, and then uh, Command S or Control S if you're on Windows, and that will save it into Lightroom. But we're not going to do that right now. So let's go ahead and do that. And we have some pretty basic actions right here. Uh, we have step forward, step backwards, which is basically undo, redo, but you don't have to hit Command Option Z. And uh, I for always forget what the redo one is. Uh, redo is just Command Z apparently, or step forward is is shift command z okay i never remember that so if you ever want to um change these and make sure that they are added to a function key like f1 or shift f1 or command shift f1 um you can do that and you can just hit uh your function keys and stuff like that so you can have an easy step forward step backwards cool stuff right there um duplicate layer pretty simple it just duplicates the layer that's currently visible and turns off your original layer and reveal all mask pretty much just applies a black I'm not sorry a white mask and hide all mask applies a white uh, god damn it <laughs> applies a black mask I can't get this right it's too late it's only 820 um, normal blend mode these are all pretty self-explanatory the blend modes uh, just right here so luminosity, I don't know why I changed that to luminosity. Um, rasterize is pretty much just switching from your smart object to a rasterized, uh, uh, what's it called? Switching from a smart object to a basically a normal layer, which now that I'm looking at it, I don't have a smart object button here. Whoopsie daisies, I gotta add that in pretty soon. Um, group layers, pretty simple stuff. If you ever wanted to like select all the layers or select a certain couple of layers and just, whoops, and just like group these. So select the layers you wish to group and press, put, put, press play to continue. So we've already got that done and it groups them. It says layer, group layers. Let's go ahead and do that. So select a mask, pretty simple stuff. It just opens up select a mask, which we have right here. If we ever need to get into that, cancel. Lens corrections. This is cool if you're working with JPEGs. Now we can go ahead and just press play and it will bring up your uh, lens correction filter. So it says, hey, your lens model is the Sony e mount 10 to 18 millimeter F4 optical steady shot. If you didn't apply that to your raw file, you can go ahead and do that with these layers or with this filter. So that's pretty neat if you're working with JPEGs or if you're working with in-camera HDR and you want to do some lens corrections and have everything you know look 
nice and stuff. So let's cancel out of that. Uh, gradient blend top, basically the same thing as gradient blend right, except it goes from uh, the top portion. So if you ever needed to blend uh, the ceiling, um, you can do that with the gradient blend top because it goes white to black and it's a pretty smooth gradient. And then gradient blend bottom, pretty much the opposite of gradient blend top. It's just black, uh, black to white. So it's blending in the bottom portion of the, of the image. Um, that's pretty much it. So if you ever need to go back and uh, delete your layers, you can go ahead and do that because our layers that are off, these ones right here, are our original layers and our orange layers, as you can see by the label here, are our action layers. So I've gone ahead and tried to make it as easy as possible for you guys. Um, so that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and flatten the image and hit Command S to save. And that'll save it back into Lightroom and you can go ahead and do whatever the hell you want. Um, by the way, if you're wondering how to get rid of um, this nonsense right here, go down. You can always go ahead and use Crop, but I find that it's a bit finicky. You can go ahead and set up a preset for scaling it to 101. And that basically will get rid of that uh the edges so you can do that say preset create a preset call it whatever the hell you want um so that's pretty much it that is my essential photoshop actions with the signature workflow and the additional actions and stuff like that if you guys have any comments questions concerns just let me know and i will get to them as soon as possible